Good day everyone! Welcome to part 2 of Responsibility Accounting. In this video, so we will be solving the 13 problems as promised in part 1. And I would suggest na every time you flash yung problem sa screen ninyo, i-post muna natin or screenshot and then uh, solve on your own. And, now, and once you're done, you can continue watching the video for the suggested na solution. Okay? So I hope matuto tayo so from this video. And if you have comments and suggestions, please send email to ryancanonrock ryancanonrock at kano.com Okay? Nasa dulo rin siya ng video na to. So thank you so much. Enjoy the learning. And let's start with problem number 1. Okay? So this is your problem number 1. My question is what is the variance in the total cost of division X uh, if the budget is prepared based on 2,000 units? So this is two, for 2,000 units. And then the actual units happen to be equal. So 2,000 units din yung ating actual uh, output. So kapag ganito ang scenario, immediately the budget can be compared with the actual na data. Agad-agad. So, to do the variance analysis, compare lang natin yung sales ng budget and actual. So, that would have a difference of 10,000. Is it favorable or unfavorable? F or U. Since the actual is lower, so this is unfavorable. Pero actually, ang question ng number 1 is on the cost lang. Sinama lang natin yung sa sales natin. On the cost part, for the variable na cost of goods sold, 187 ang actual, higher than the budget. So that is 7,000 unfavorable. And for this one, 6,000, 465 versus 40,000, this is 6,500 unfavorable. And for this one, actual is 30, the budget is 38, so we are lower. So 8,000 as to cost, we are favorable. We have favorable variance. And then for fixed admin, 22,000 actual higher than the budget. So we have 2,000 unfavorable. And then for fixed selling, 50,000 and 53,000 here. 3,000 higher than actual, so this is unfavorable. So to answer the question, what is the variance in the total cost of division X? So just solve for all the variances here. And the variance would be how much? 7,000 plus 65 less 8,000 plus 2,000 and 3,000. So the answer is 10,500 unfavorable. That is your answer in number 1. Okay? Pero kung gusto natin kompletohin lahat ng pwedeng itanong nito, itatanong nito, what happened to the performance of the department or segment so we are talking about the difference between the operating income ng budget at saka ng actual data so operating income natin dito so that would be 480,000 minus all this data, the answer would be 152,000 okay but the actual data would be the actual operating income is 470,000 minus all these expenses. So we have 131,500. Okay? The question is, what happened to the performance of the segment? We have favorable or unfavorable? Lower ang income. So therefore, mas mababa 20,500 na unfavorable. Even if you check, 10,000 na unfavorable for your sales, 10,500 unfavorable for your cost. So we have 20,500 unfavorable overall. So we have 20,500 pesos below the expectation from the uh, in the segment. Okay? So that's number one. Kapag equal ang actual data or actual output with the budgeted output, walang problema. Compare immediately. But looking at number 2, what is the variance in the total cost of division X? But, but what happened to the actual units? 
the actual units is 85% of the plan. So meaning, we, don't, we do not have 2,000, but instead we have only 1,700 units. So with that, you cannot compare the budget here immediately with the data in the actual column. So we have to prepare what we call flexible budget. So this is number two in problem number one. So let's remove this part. Okay. The actual is 1,700. Ang gawin, ang prepare ng flexible budget for 1,700 units. Ang tawag natin sa budget ng isang level lang is just the static budget. But if we prepare at different levels, we call it flexible budget. So in flexible budget preparation, we just adjust, we only adjust the variable components. So that would include your sales. So what is your sales under flexible budget? So that would be 408,000 times 1, say, uh, again, 408,000 divided by 2,000 times 1,700. Okay? So 480,000 times 17 over 2,000. So the answer is... 408,000. What will now be your variable cogs in your flexible budget? So that is 180 divided by 2,000 times 1, 7. So that is 180 divided by 2,000 times 1, 7. So the answer is 153,000. And then for fixed manufacturing costs, what is your cost under flexible budget? Again, only the variable components will be adjusted. But the fixed component will just be the same. So, ito ay 40,000. Okay? Same. And then for variable selling, adjust po natin yan. 38,000 divided by 2,000 times 1,7. So, the answer is 32,300. And then for the fixed admin and fixed selling, again, fixed component po. So, we just copy the data. So, 20,000 and 50,000. So now, under flexible budget, the expected operating income is how much? 408,000 minus 153 minus 40 minus 32,300 minus 20 and 50. So the answer is 112,700. That is your operating income. But then again, a question in number two is just the variance in the total cost. So, yung portion lang dito. Kaya, when we prepare the variance the variance column, we now compare the actual versus the flexible budget. Ito, naging basis lang natin in coming up with the flexible budget. So, what happened to your sales? So, 408 ang budget, 470 ang actual. So, 470 minus 408, that is 62,000. What do we have? F or U? We have favorable kasi mas mataas si actual. As to variable cost of goods sold, what do we have? 153 versus 187,000. So, 187 minus 153, that is 34,000 F or U. Mas malaki yung actual, e eh, cost to. Kaya ito ay unfavorable. Okay? And then for fixed manufacturing cost, 40,000 versus 46, 6,500, mas malaki actual, so this is still unfavorable. This part, 32,3, compared with 30, this is 2,300, kali mas mababa, yung actual, ay cost to, so ito ay favorable. For this part, 20,000 versus 22, 2,000 na lamang na actual, so ito ay and favorable as well. This one is 3,000 na unfavorable din. But we are asked on the total cost variance. So ito lang po yung kukunin natin na total. So that would be 34,000 plus 6,500 minus 2,300 na favorable plus 2 and 3,000. Okay? So the answer is 
43,200 at ito po ay unfavorable. So that is the answer in number 2. But just to complete, since meron na rin naman tayong data, 62F and 43,200 U. So the total variance overall is 18,800 na favorable. Even if you check the total here, 131,500 minus 112,700, the difference is still 18,800. Since this is higher, yung actual, so we are 18,800 above the expectation. So that is what we are doing. If the actual units sold is different from the budgeted units. Okay? So that's for number two in problem number one. Okay? Let's move to number three. It says in number three that instead of 85%, we now have 95% uh, na actual units. Okay? So, let us just prepare the flexible budget for 95% or 1,900 units. So, let us just erase some of the data here. Okay? So, we are now preparing the flexible budget for 95% or 1,900 units. So, 1,900 here. So, again, adjust the variable components. So, sales is 480,000 divided by 2,000 times 1,900 or simply multiply 480,000 times 95% and the answer is 456,000. For your variable codes, 180 times 0 0.95, that is 171,000. For your fixed manufacturing cost, that is still 40,000. So variable selling, 38 times 0 0.95, the answer is 36,100. Fixed selling, fixed admin, 20,000. And 50,000. And now let's compute for the operating income under the flexible budget. So, what is expected? 456,000 minus 171 minus 40 minus 36 minus 20 and minus 50. So, the answer is 138,900. So, we will now compare the operating income of the actual and our flexible budget. So, lower ang ating actual. So, since it's all income, so what do we have? We have below expectation na performance or unfavorable. So, 138,900 minus 131. 500, the answer is 7,400. Unfavorable or below expectation. So that's the answer in number three. Okay? Let's move to number four. So number four naman, instead of 95% ng plan, 5% higher than the plan. So meaning, we are going to prepare another budget or flexible budget for 1.05 uh, or 105% or 2,100 units. So, baguhin na ulit natin ang flexible budget natin. Alright. Dito na lang yan. So, ito ngayon ay 2,100 na. 2,100. But then again, pwede naman natin na times 1.05. So, 480,000 times 1.05. Your sales is 504 1,000. Variable codes, 180 times 1.05. Oops, 180 times 1.05. The answer is 189,000. Again, fixed manufacturing cost, 40,000. Variable selling, adjust natin, 38 times 1.05. That is 39,900. For fixed selling and fixed admin, Still, 20,000 and 50,000. 
Okay? So, what's your operating income in, number f in the flexible budget? 504 minus 189,000 minus 40 minus 39,900 minus 20 and minus 50. So, the answer is 165,100. That is our expected na income. Pero ang income lang natin in the actual is 131,500. So again, we are below the expectation. So the variance is unfavorable. By how much? 165,100 minus 131,500. The answer is 33,600. Unfavorable or below expectation. So that's the answer in number 4, in problem number 1. Okay? So, those are the answers to problem number one. We will now move to problem number two. Okay, in problem number two, the question would be, if the common costs of 10,000 are divided equally between the two stores, determine the store B's or store B2's segment profit margin. So, segment margin Based on our segment reporting last time, so that would be your sales na 100,000 minus the variable operating expenses. So the variable cost na 45,000. Kasama ba ang traceable to B2, controllable by B2? Yes, kasi ito yung controllable na direct fixed cost. So we have 17,500. Kasama ba ang traceable to B2 and controllable by others? In other words, non-controllable pero direct. Since segment margin ng tanong, yes, kasama pa rin siya. So, non-controllable direct fixed cost na 12,500. Tapos may sinabi pa sa huli, now, if the common costs of 10,000 are divided equally, common cost in direct fixed cost, kasama pa yun sa computation natin, which is 5,000 each in store, the answer is no. Kasi segment margin lang ang tanong. So therefore, the segment margin is simply 100,000 minus all these amounts. So this amounted to 25 thousand pesos that is our segment margin okay so that is our answer in problem number two move the bias of problem number three requirements in problem number three are number one compute for the segment contribution margin number two Income that will be used to evaluate this store manager. And number three, income that will be used to evaluate the this facility. If you will notice, ang one, C, CM ang tinatanong or contribution margin. Number two, ito yung segment margin. Kasi yung store manager yung i-evaluate. So sabi natin sa, sa segment reporting, kapag manager ang tinatanong, segment margin dapat ang ibibigay nating sagot. Kapag is facility or segment na mismo ang tanong, ang ibigay natin ay segment margin. So, we will draft muna yung ating uh, uh, suggested na, na format for segment reporting. So, that would be your sales. And then, contribution margin kasi ang unang tanong, minus all your variable costs. So, we have our contribution margin. Once we have that, imaminus natin yung Controllable direct fixed cost to arrive at your controllable margin. And this is your number 2. Ito yung number 1. Ito yung number 2. And then, to get number 3, imaminus na natin yung non-controllable direct fixed cost. We will come up with our answer in number 3, which is which is the segment margin. Okay. But, 
marami kasing naka bullet ng mga data so kailangan maklasify natin yung mga given amounts kung saan siya magpo-fall or meron bang papasok sa lahat ba ng amounts ay papasok sa lahat ng items natin dito kasi minsan ang problem hindi niya sasabi na ito ang controllable, ito ang non-controllable ito ang direct, you have to assess kung saan talaga makukunta yung mga amounts na for expenses na i-mention in the problem just like in problem number 3 ok, so let's start Mabini Training operates a retail store in Northeast West Facility. So there are three branches. The following information relates to East Facility, which is our subject. Okay? Yung East lang ang tinatanong. The store sold 90,000 units at 20 pesos each. So meron na tayong sales. So 90,000 units times 20 pesos each. So that would be how much? 1.8 million. Nilayo ko muna. Okay? 1.8 million. After having purchased the units from various suppliers for 9 pesos. So, saan papasok ng 9? Sa variable cost. Okay? So, lagay muna natin yung 9 dito. East sales people are paid a 20% commission based on gross sales pesos. So, ibig sabihin, kung may sales, merong another 20% na variable cost. 20% of your 20 pesos ay 4 pesos. So, therefore, dagdag po sa variable cost natin yung 4 pesos. Plus 4. Okay? Ano pa? Sabi rito, East sales manager oversees the placement of local advertising contracts which totaled 50,000 for the year. So, local advertising expense, sa, saan mapupunta to? Yung mga advertising ay direct, of course. Pero is it controllable or non-controllable? The answer is, that is controllable. Pwede namang wala advertisement, pwede rin meron. So, that would be 50,000. Idagdag natin sa controllable direct fixed cost. So, that is 50,000. To continue, Sabi, total 50,000 for the year plus 10% of the gross sales price. Oops, meron na naman tayong variable component. 10% of the gross sales price. So, that is 2 pesos. So, isama natin dito yung 2 pesos. Okay. To continue, local property taxes amounted to 15,000. Ang local property taxes ay non-controllable. Pero ang tanong, is it? Direct or indirect? The answer is direct. If you remove the facility, wala pong property tax. So that would be non-controllable, direct fixed cost. Isama natin yung 15,000. Now, let's continue. The sales manager's 40,000 salary is set by the East store manager. Yung store manager ang pinaka-in-charge, meron siyang sales manager with 40,000 na salary. Is it controllable or non-controllable? It is controllable by the manager. Is it direct? Yes. So, ito ay 40,000 na controllable, direct, fixed cost. So, yun. Next. In contrast, the store managers, oops, yung pinaka-in-charge na, 108,000 salary is determined by the PUP's vice president. So, 108,000 salary is part of non-controllable. Kasi salary na nung pinaka-in-charge. Pero, since siya yung pinaka-in-charge with the department, direct pa rin siya. So, plus 108,000 sa ating non-controllable direct fixed cost. Okay? The two supervisors get 25,000 each. So, meron sila 25,000 each. Therefore, supervisor sila. Ito ay controllable. Eh, dalawa sila. So, 50,000 na dagdag sa controllable direct fixed cost. Plus 50,000. Okay. And to continue, is incurred 12,000 of other non-controllable costs along with 15,000 income tax expense. Non-controllable and incur ng ease. So, therefore, direct fixed costs. So, 
12,000 sa non-controllable direct fixed cost. Okay. And sabi rito, may 15,000 income tax expense. Tulad ng sinabi natin kanina, yung income tax expense would be part na nasa ilalim pa. So, hindi pa siya kasama. So, 15,000 ignore. Okay? And then, there are not traceable corporate overhead which totaled 48,000. So, itong 48,000 hindi rin kasama kasi hanggang segment margin lang ang talong. But if the question is, the share or the operating income share ng segment na to in the entire organization kasama na siya. So, dito, hindi. So, we are now able to read the entire problem tapos na-classify na natin lahat ng expenses into each uh, proper na categories. Let us now compute for the data here. Okay? Kapag ganito plus yung problem kasi, uh, you really have to read the entire problem kasi ang dami na enumerate na expenses. So, let's start solving. So, variable cost natin would be 9 plus 4 plus 2, that would be 15. Okay? times 90,000 so that would be 50 times 90,000 1 million 350,000 okay and then our contribution margin is 1 a minus 150 450,000 that is your answer in number 1 okay your answer in number 2 would be the controllable margin. So let us first get the total of your controllable direct fixed cost. So that would be 50,000 plus 40 plus 50,000, 140,000. So your controllable margin would be 450 minus the 140, 310,000. That is your answer in number 2. Okay? And then, not controllable direct fixed cost, just get the sum of 15 and 108 and 12,000. So the answer is 135,000. And then, compute the segment margin. 310 minus 135,000. The answer is 175,000. That is your answer in, in number 3. Okay? So that's the solution for problem number three. We are now ready to solve problem number four. In problem number four, we are asked to compute for the net income or net loss that the new project are, is expected to contribute. Okay, so may existing tayong mga invested assets tapos magdadagdag ng bagong asset ano ang dadali ng income or loss nitong bagong project and then number 2 if the manager of the division is evaluated on ROI alone will she invest on the new project why or why not so we will come up with a decision later and number 3 what would be the residual income for all its operations kasama na po yung bagong project just in case okay so, number one, how much net income or net loss ang dala ng bagong project? E di alamin muna natin, magkano ba income or loss? Nung luma, magkano ba income or loss ng kasama yung luma at saka yung bagong project? Okay? So, segment margin or SM. Okay? So, segment margin ng lahat muna. Magkano ba segment margin ng lahat? Sabi kasi rito, Paints Division of Port 11 Incorporated had the following results in 2019. So here are your sales. Profit margin. Ano nga yung profit margin natin? That is your profit over sales or your segment income over sales. So dito pa lang, makikita natin yung segment income ng mga existing. So, segment income na existing, which is 20% of 12 million. Magkano po yun? 2.4 million. Pag kasi nalaman mo yung segment income ng kabuuan kasama yung bagong project, i-minus natin yung segment income ng mga lumang project, makukuha mo yung segment income ng bagong project. Okay? So, ano, paano natin makukuha yung segment income ng lahat? 
the division is considering 2 million investment in a new project. So, initially, may 15 million plus 2 million, we have now 17 million na assets. The estimated ROI for all its operations would be 30% in the new investment. So, ibig sabihin, 30% ng ito po ay 30% ng 17 million. Kasi for all its operations. So, magkano po yung 30% ng 17 million? So, that would be 17 million times 0.3. The answer is 5 million 100,000. Okay? So, with that, ang segment margin ng bagong project ay 2.4 million 2 million 700,000. Okay? So, that's the answer in number 1. So, yan ang daladalang income ng bagong project. And number 2, ang tanong, are we going to invest or not? Based on the ROI. Ano po ba ang ROI natin? Ang ROI natin nung pag lahat lahat na, that would be 30% given po sa problem. Ang ROI natin, yung mga old projects natin, so that would be segment margin, magkano ba yung segment na income natin? Ng old, that is 2.4 million. Divided by this investment nung una, bago dumating yung bagong project, and that would be 15 million. So magkano po ito? 2.4 divided by 15 million. 16% So, ang old na ROI natin is 16% Magiging 30% Kunin na rin natin yung ROI ng new Pero most likely Mas mataas kesa sa old Na ROI to Because hindi lang niya Paakyat yung Yung ROI ng kabuuan So, ROI ng new So, that would be 27 Kasi segment margin over investment. Pagkano ba investment natin sa bago? 2 million lang. So therefore, we have ROI of 27 divided by 2 million. That would be 135%. Are we going to invest? Yes. Number one, mas malaki ang ROI ng kabuan na bago kumpara sa, sa, sa dati. Tapos ang ROI ng bago is 135%. So, we are going to invest. And, sabi pa dito, the weighted average cost of capital is 15%. Ibig sabihin, the minimum required rate of return is 15%. This is much, much, much higher than 15%. Okay? So, in number 3, the last question is, what would be the residual income for all its operations? So, segment margin ng all its operations ay 5,100,000. So, we are going to, to deduct the imputed interest. So, the imputed interest, magkano imputed, imputed interest natin? Ilang percent ang weighted average cost of capital? 15%. Multiply natin ang investment natin na... 17 million. So, magkano po yun? 17 million times 15%. So, the answer is 2 million 550,000. So, the residual income or RI, residual income is 2 million 550,000. Okay? So that completes the solution for problem number 4. So we are going to move with problem number 5. Okay, problem number 5 is just the same with problem number 4. Same requirements as well. Okay, so number 1, income or loss that the new project is expected to contribute. And... Again, we will just compute the segment margin of all the operations minus the segment margin of the old projects and we will come up with the segment margin of the new project. Okay? Segment uh, margin of the old 
projects, 25% ng 12 million 500,000. Okay? So that would be 125 times 0.25. So that is 3 million 125,000. Okay. Magkano ba segment margin na kabuuan ng bago? Sabi dito 30%. Okay? So 30% ng ano ng all its investment. 10 million and 2 million so 12 million lahat ng total investments natin times 30% that would be 3.6 billion so yan so ang segment income ng bagong project natin i-less lang natin si segment income ng old so that would be 475,000 answer in number 1 Number two again, if the manager of the division is evaluated on ROI alone, will she invest on the new project and why? ROI, ano po ba ang ROI ng lahat natin? So ROI natin ay 3.6 million divided by the all the investments. Actually, binigay pala na 30%. Pero we'll just check 3.6 million times all the investments na 12 million. So that is 30% or yung given natin. Okay? And ROI na existing na projects natin would be 3125 over yung existing investment natin prior to the new prior to the addition of new project. So that is 31.25% So that is the ROI of the existing project Okay? So what is the ROI ng new project? So ROI ng new project ay 475,000 divided by the investment of 2 million So the answer is 475 divided by 2 million That is 23.75% Okay? So what would be your answer now? Are we going to invest on the new project? Using ROI alone So the answer is No Kasi The ROI of all this per 1.25 na If you invest with this new project, hihilahin niya yung pababa Naging 30% siya Okay? Kaya sabi natin, kapag segment margin alone lang Ang pag-uusapan natin, meron kang kita ng 4.75 Okay na yan, sa totoo lang Pero, stricter yung requirement na gusto nang mangyari uh, Based on the ROI natin, are we going to invest or not? So, 23.75, hihilahin niya yung pababa Ito kaya we will not invest Pero kung hindi yun ang pasihal Basta meron ka lang minimum required rate of return Like sinabi rito na 15% 23.75% is higher than that Okay? So in that case We will invest But to answer the problem uh, We will not invest Because the ROI of the new project is lower Than the existing na ROI Okay? And to answer number three, what would be the residual income for the new project alone? So this time, yung new project lang ang pinag-uusapan natin. So segment margin ng new, 475,000. Okay? So what would be the imputed interest here? Imputed interest ay magkano po ating investment? That would be 2 million times 0.15, 300,000. Ayan. So, ang ating residual income ay 175,000 for the new project alone. Okay? So, these are our solutions for problem number 5. Now, problem number 6 requires to determine the ROI 
or re return on investment, residual income, and economic value added. So we are going to use the three methods to evaluate the uh, investment center. Okay, so ROI, so we have our sales, we have our variable cost, Ang sales natin ay 350,000. The variable cost ay 250,000. And then we also have traceable fixed cost or direct fixed cost. Hindi na sinabi kung controllable or non-controllable. Magkakasama na doon. So that would be uh, direct fixed cost na 50,000. So dito pa lang, kuha na natin yung segment margin natin amounting to 50,000. Okay? So that is our segment margin. Magkano ROI natin? O ilang percent? ROI is the segment margin na 50,000 divided by your investment. Magkano investment natin? That is for, for uh, 80,000. So over 80,000. So ang ROI natin ay ilang percent? So 50 over 80, the answer is 62.5%. Okay? Number 2, residual income. So, to get residual income, ima-minus po natin yung imputed interest. Imputed interest. Ano ang imputed interest natin? We have the target return of 12% and we also have the cost of capital of 10%. So, Ano yung pipiliin natin? Ang cost of capital or target return? The answer is the target return. So, ang imputed interest natin ay 12% times ilan ang invested natin? 80,000. So, that would be 80 times 0.12. The answer is 9,600. So, therefore, our receivable income receivable income is 40,000 400 answer in number 2 okay and lastly si Eva so how do we compute for Eva after tax profit magkano po ito 1 minus tax rate ng 50,000 ang gagamitin po natin ay 30% na tax rate so 70% of 50,000 so that is 35 Thousand. And then, the cost of capital is 10%. So, 10% times the, what? Invested capital of 80,000. So, the answer is 8,000. Okay? And then, your economic value added or EVA is 27,000. Okay? Again, in computing the receivable income, ginamit mo yung target return. But when computing the economic value added, we make use of the cost of capital or weighted average cost of capital at 10%. Okay, so that's problem number 6. Move tayo sa problem number 7. In problem number 7, we are asked to determine the residual income for your prof. Residual income and alone. Okay? So, the company has the following results for the year. So, we have the revenues, the variable expenses, and fixed expenses. And we have the divisional assets of 1.5 million. The target rate of return is 12%. The cost of capital is 10 So, again, ang gagamitin natin sa residual income computation ay yung target rate of return na 12%. Ang nangyari dito sa problem na to, the sales increased to 1 million. So, we have to compute magkano may residual income natin. So, ang ating sales ay 1 million pesos. Magkano ang ating variable cost? Variable. Remember, ang variable cost ay 270 kapag 900. So, kapag 1 million, magkano variable cost natin? So, 270 over 900 times 1 
million. So the answer is actually 30%. This is 30% of your sales. So that is 300,000. And your fixed expenses I 350,000. Therefore, your segment margin I 350,000. 1 million minus 650. So that's 350,000. Residual income ang tinatanong. So, less the imputed interest. Ilang percent ang nagamitin? 12% na ating total divisional assets of 1.5 million. So, 12% of 1.5 million ay times 12%, the answer is 180,000. Kaya naman, ang residual income natin ay 170,000 pesos. Okay? Ang usual na error dito ng ilang sadyante is on the part of variable cost. Naging 1 million yung sales, pero nakakalimutan nilang i-adjust yung variable cost. Nakakapi pa rin nila yung 270. So, remember, variable cost, variable. It varies with your sales. Okay? So, this is your solution for problem number 7. Let us proceed with number 8. Okay, in problem number 8, we are asked to compute for the total expenses in order to achieve the targeted residual income. Okay, so we have here the data on your sales, we have data on your uh, residual income, and imputed interest charges. Ang hinahanap natin ay total expenses nasa gitna ng computation natin. So let's start with sales natin na 30 million. That is your revenue here. Okay? And then for your total expenses, ito po yung tinatanong sa problem. Ito po yung tinatanong total expenses. If we deduct that, makukuha natin si segment margin. Okay? Kasa di rin natin alam si segment margin. Pero pag minus natin yung imputed interest, sabi dito, 15% ang imputed interest charge. 15% of your invested capital. Magkano ba invested capital natin? Hindi nakabigay yung mismong capital na invested. Pero we have here the working capital. So working capital natin ay 1.8 million. And our plant and equipment. Plant and equipment na 17 million. 200,000. Therefore, the total invested capital ay 19 million. Okay? Pag naka-enumerate na ganito yung mga invested capital natin or mga assets natin, make sure that you only add yung mga operating assets natin. Okay? Pag meron nakalagay doon na idle yung assets na, na yun, hindi po natin isasama. Okay? So that would be 19 Million. Eh, i-multiply po natin ng ilang percent daw? 15%. So, that, your, that will be your answer here. Sige nga. So, what is your uh, 19 million times 15%? So, that will be 2 million 850 thousand. Okay? So this is 2850. And then the target residual income is given and that is amounting to 2 million. Kaya naman, if you work back, the segment margin should be 4 million 850,000. Okay? Ito po, the sum of 2 million and 2850. So therefore, to answer the question, so ima-minus po natin yung 4,850. So that would be 30 million minus 4,850. 
that is 25 million 150,000. So this is our final answer. So that's your answer in number or in problem number eight. So let's proceed with problem number nine. In problem number 9, the question is, how many valves must the valve division sell each year to generate the desired rate of, of return? So, we will start with the desired rate of return. Na desired rate of return. Check natin problem, ano ba ang desired rate of return natin? Okay? So, the valve division of industrial company produces a small valve that is used by various companies as a component part in their products. Industrial company operates its divisions as autonomous units, giving its divisional manager great discretion in pricing and other decisions. So, each division is expected to generate a rate of return of 14% on its operating assets. So, 14% times the operating assets. The valve has average operating assets of 700,000 pesos. So, magali desired rate of return natin? 700 times 14%. So, that is 98,000. Okay? Ilang valves ang dapat nating mabenta? So, the valve, the valves are sold for 5 pesos each. And the variable cost I 3 pesos. So, selling price per unit I 5. The variable cost per unit I 3. Therefore, ang CMU natin I 2 pesos per valve. Okay. And then the fixed cost totaled 462,000 per year. If we add the fixed cost na 462,000, okay, this is the desired rate of return. Ibig sabihin, sa din si expected natin na segment margin, add natin sa fixed cost, makukuha natin yung contribution margin. Para tayo na solve, solve out upwards dun sa ating income statement na contribution margin approach. So this is how much? So, 560,000. That is your total contribution margin. Meron naman tayong contribution margin per unit na 2. So therefore, if we divide by the CMU na 2 pesos, that would be number of valves na 280,000. Okay? So that is your solution for problem number 9. Okay, problem number 10. The question is, what is the minimum price that Matipid could accept for the order and still maintain its expected residual income? So, we have the current na operations. Tapos may offer. So, ang tanong, magkano natin sa set to price at the minimum na we are going to accept the offer. So, alamin muna natin. Ano ba yung residual income na gusto natin i-maintain? And afterwards, let us work backwards kung, mag, kung magkano yung price na dapat natin i-set. Okay. So, ang sales natin ngayon ay 70,000. Ang selling price ay 10. So, therefore, ito ay 700,000. So, 10 times 70,000 units. And then your variable cost, variable cost natin ay 4 pesos times 70,000. So that would be 280,000 pesos. And then your fixed cost is 300,000. Pero i-minus muna natin to, to get our contribution margin. So that is magkano to? Uh, 420,000. And then... Your fixed cost is how much? 300,000. So, ang segment margin natin ay 120,000. Okay? And then, ano pong sinabi dito? The minimum required rate of return is 
So, 15%, so imputed interest yung ma-minus natin to get our receivable income na, na desired. Ano ba yung imputed interest natin? 15% times magkano po ang ating assets or investment? That is 500,000. 15% of 500 is how much? 75,000. So, ang receivable income natin ay 45,000. At ito yung gusto natin i-maintain in such a way tatanggapin natin yung offer ng ating uh, kausap. Now, a foreign customer has approached a Matipids manager with an offer to buy 10,000 units of uh, the product at 7 pesos each. Currently, nagbabenta tayo ng 10. 7 ang offer. The question is, kung i-accept natin, kung ano dapat yung price? Okay? If Matipid accepts the order, it would not lose any of the 70,000 units at the regular price. So, ibig sabihin, hindi magagalaw yung 70,000 na nabibenta natin. So, extra sales po yung 10,000 pag in-accept natin. Meaning, there is excess capacity yung ating Matipid division or expenditures company. So, ito ang gusto natin yung maintain na residual income. So, that would be... 45,000 also. Okay? Magkano na ang imputed interest natin? So, because we're going upwards kasi yung selling price ang gusto natin malaman. So, magkano po yung ating imputed interest? 15% pa rin po. Pero, sabi rito sa dulo, accepting the order would increase fixed cost by 10,000 pesos and investment by 40,000. So, therefore, ito ay 540 thousand na. So, 15% of 540,000 So, that would be 81,000 Kaya naman, ang segment margin natin na expected dito ay plus 45,000 That is 126,000 Okay? Tapos, ang fixed cost natin, sinabi rito na accepting it would increase fixed cost by 10,000. So, ito ay magiging 310,000. Kaya naman, ang contribution margin natin ay magiging 436,000. Okay? Actually, itong work back natin dito, pwede tayo mag-stop from this part. Kasi, dito pa lang, pwede na tayo magpag-solve. Okay? Yung 436,000, ay para ay kasama na yung bag, yung pag accept mo yung offer. So meaning ito ay para sa 80,000 units. Ngayon, tanggalin natin yung sa 70,000 units, kaya ang matitira para dun sa 10,000 units ay 16,000 pesos. Again, 436,000 minus the 420,000, 16,000. Kasi ito ay pinagsamang 70,000 units yung nandito at yung 10,000 units na offer ng foreign na customer. Now, itong 16,000, pag dinivide mo ng 10, divided by 10,000 units, ibig sabihin, 1.6 ang CMU natin. Ang contribution margin per unit. Okay? Therefore, kung ang CMU natin ay 1.6, ang variable cost natin ay 4, ang minimum na selling price per unit that we will accept the offer is 5.60. Okay? So that is your answer in problem number 10. Problem 11 has 6 independent questions. Okay? So, sabi sa number 1, Division A could increase its sales by 300,000 by increasing its investment by 300,000. So, we have to compute for the ROI. Okay. So, sales natin for number 1 is dating 1.5 million. Ngayon ay magiging 1.8 million na. Okay. And then, the variable cost is dati, 500 pag 1.5 billion na sales. So, ibig sabihin, one-third po ang ating variable cost. Kaya naman, ito ay 600 
thousand. Kaya ang contribution margin natin ay 1.2 million. Okay? For your fixed cost, magkano ang fixed cost natin? Dati, may 1.5 million na sales, minus cost na 500,000, minus the profit na 350,000, ibig sabihin, ang fixed cost natin ay magkano ito? 1.5 minus 500 minus 350, 650,000. So therefore, our segment margin is 550,000 pesos. The question is ROI. So divide natin ito ng investment. Magkano po ang investment natin? Dati po 500,000. Nadagdagan ng 300,000. So divided by 800,000. Your ROI is how many percent? That is 550 divided by 800,000. So 68.75 percent. So that is your number one. Okay. For number two, almost the same case with number one. Pero ang question is to compute for its total residual income. And iba yung change ng sales. So, sales natin sa number 2 ay 1,650,000. And your variable cost, one-third ulit. So, that is how much? 550,000. So, ating contribution margin ay 1,100,000. Aba ba? Yes. So, ang fixed cost natin ay computed kanina, 650,000. Therefore, your segment margin is 11 minus 650. The answer is 450,000. The question is residual income. So, we are going to uh, deduct the imputed interest. Ang imputed interest natin ay 15%. Target is 15, cost of capital is 12, so yung 15 yung nagamitin natin. 15% of your investment. Ang investment mo ay dating 500 plus 400, so times na 900,000. Okay? Initially 500, tapos mag-increase daw na 400,000. So magkato po yun? 900 times 0.15, the answer is 135,000. Therefore, Your receivable income is 315,000. Okay? That is our answer in number 2. Let us now compute number 3. Oops. For number 3, kay division B naman. Sabi dito, Division B could reduce its investment so that its asset turnover increased by 2. So, there is a starting point. And then the question is, oh wait, sinabi pa, holding the total sales constant, compute its residual income. Okay, so the starting point is the asset turnover. So, yung asset turnover natin is your sales over your assets or investment. Ang sales natin ay kay Division B po ah, 5.5 million. And then, ang ating investment ay 1,250,000. And that would be equal to 5,5 divided by 1,250. That is 4.4. Okay? E sabi, asset turnover increased by 2. So, the new Asset turnover would be 6.4, okay? While holding the total sales constant equals 5.5 million, walang sinabi sa investment, so it could change, okay? Sinabi niya, it could reduce the investment, okay? So the new investment now is 5.5 million divided by 6.4. So the answer is 
375. That is your investment. Ang question po ay residual income. So, wala namang changes sa sales. Wala changes sa ibang mga expenses natin. So, we can make use of the segment margin in division P, which is how much? Segment margin natin ay 625,000. So, less the imputed interest na ang gagamitin natin ay 15% times itong bagong investment natin na 859 375 magkano po yon times 0.15 oops 128,906.25 therefore our residual income the number 3 is 625 minus our imputed interest that is 400 96,093 pesos and 75 centavos. Okay? That is your residual income in number 3. Number 4. Almost the same story with number 3 except that the sales will increase by 10%. At hindi residual income ang pinahanap kundi ROI. Okay? So, we can make this of the 4.4 na. So, ang asset natin na turnover na bago is 6.4. Tapos sabi natin, the sales will increase by 10%. So, that would be 5.5 million. Multiply natin ng 1.1 over your investment. So, from here, we can compute for our investment na bago. Magkano po investment natin? 5.5 million or 6 million, 50,000. Divided by 6.4, so the answer is 945,312.15. That is your investment. Okay? Okay. So, tinatanong si ROI. So, kompetin mo na natin yung bagong segment margin kasi nagbago po yung sales natin. Okay? Your sales now is how much? 6,050,000. million times 1.1. So, ang variable cost natin, ang ratio and proportion natin is 3,5 is 2,5,5. Yan po ang ratio niya sa sales. So, The variable cost is 6,050,000 times 3,500 divided by 5,500. So the answer is 3,850,000. Okay? So ang contribution margin natin ay 6,050,000 minus 3,500, 2,200,000. And our fixed cost is Just like in problems 1 and 2, i-compute natin yung fixed cost natin prior to these changes. Kasi fixed naman yun, hindi naman magbabago. So, magkano ba yung yung sales natin kanina? That is 5.5 million minus 3.5 million na variable cost. Tapos, ang fixed cost ay nawawala. And then, ang ating uh, segment margin prior to these changes ay 625,000. Therefore, ano itong fixed cost natin? The answer is 55 minus 35 minus 625. So, the answer is... Alright. 1,375,000. Okay, kaya naman, ang segment margin natin na bago ay 2,200,000 minus 1,375, that is 825,000 pesos. Your new segment margin. Ang tanong ay ROI. So, magkano po ang ROI natin? I-divide po natin ito na bago nating investment. So, investment natin ay 945, 312.50. So, the answer is 
thousand divided by nine forty five three one two point five. So the answer is eighty seven point twenty seven percent. Okay. So that is your solution in number four. And we will move to number five. So number five naman, we are considering to add a new division. So parang yung computation natin before na we are just adding a new project. Okay? Ang pinaka question is, what is the income or loss associated with the new investment? So again, kung, alam mo, kung gusto mo malaman yung income or loss ng new investment, alamin mo yung segment margin ng lahat ng operations. Okay? Tapos, imamayos ulit natin segment margin ng old divisions para makuha natin yung segment margin ng new project alone. Sabi rito sa problem, this would require additional investment of 750000 And upon addition, the ROI for all the company's operations shall become 40%. So kung 40% pala ito, multiply natin ng magkanong investment. Si A, 500. Si B, 1,250. Si C, pag naad, 750. A total of 2.5 million. So therefore, 1 million ang segment margin ng all its operations. Magkano yung segment margin ng old divisions? So A and B lang siya. 350 and 625. Okay, 350,000 plus 625,000. So that is 975,000. So, ang segment margin or income or loss associated with the new project alone is just 25,000 pesos. So that is number 5. And number 6, the question is just Related to number 5, if the manager of the division is evaluated on ROI alone, will the company invest on the new project or with division C? And why? So, ano ba ang ROI ng all its operations? Binigay natin kanina, 40%. Ang ROI ng previews ng mga divisions A and B, so that would be, Magkano kay A? 350. Kay B? 625. So, ito po yun. 975,000. Divide po natin sa investment noon ng 1,750,000. 500 plus 1,250. So, 975 divided by 1,750. So, that would amount, and that would be 57.71%. Okay? So, bago magkaroon ng ng Division C, 55. Nung nagkaroon ng Division C, naging 40%. Ibig sabihin, mas mababa yung ROI ng bago. So, we will not accept the project or we will not add Division C. Let us compute. Ano ba kasi ROI ng new project alone? That is, 25,000 divided by the investment on new project alone is 750,000. 750. So, meaning this is 3.33%, much, much lower than the previous ROI. And also, this is much lower than the cost of capital. Hindi man lang makukover yung cost of capital. And even lower sa required return ng management. Okay? So, those are the solutions for numbers 1 to 6 ng problem number 11. And we are moving to the last problems. 12 and 13. Now, we are going to answer problems 12 and 13. Parehas kasi na may kinalaman kay Dupont. Okay? Anong sabi ng Dupont? Ang sabi ng Dupont, just like in our ROI, minsan hindi available yung segment margin natin and your investments. Okay? Paano natin makukumpit yung ROI ng hindi given yung dalawa? We can actually expand this formula. So, segment margin times investment. Okay? 
we will uh, put some things on numerator and denominator dapat parehas lang na pwede natin eliminate afterwards and we will arrive with the same formula just like sales okay okay so pag kinasal to babalik po tayo sa original na formula balik tayo sa ROI and if you will not you will notice itong SM over sales ano ba yung kapag sales na nasa ilalim that is what we call profit margin Okay? Itong isa naman, sales ang nasa ibabaw, investment nasa ilalim, that is your investment turnover or asset turnover. Okay? So, ang ROI pala, pag wala yung mga ito, pwede naman makompute using these ratios. Sometimes, ang profit margin, ang ginagamit ay return on sales. Parehas lang sila ngayon kasi wala namang consideration on preferred stocks na yung responsibility accounting. So, ang um, ROI is either profit margin times investment turnover or return on sales times the investment turnover. Ayan. So, magagamit natin ito in our problems number 12 and 13. For number 12, sabi dito, investment turnover increased by 140% and ROS decreased by 25%. What would happen to the ROI? So, ang ROI natin would be, so, tingnan natin, for ROS, decreased by 25%, so that would be point or magiging 75%. Tama ba? Magiging 75%. Yung turnover natin would increase by 140%. So, multiply natin ang 2.4. Bakit 2.4? Increase by 140. So, therefore, i-add natin yung 140. It will be 240 or 2.4. 240% or 2.4. Okay? So, therefore, if we multiply that, 75% point 0.75 times 2.4, the answer would be 1.8. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, Ang change in ROI, so from the point of reference na 1, would be 0 0.8 or 80% na increase. Okay? Ulitin lang natin, why 75% kasi sabi, decrease by 25%. So from 100% magiging 75%. Why 2.4? Kasi mag-increase ng 140%. Assuming na 1 times... Uh, assuming na 1, dagdagan natin ng 140%, so plus 1.4, kaya naging 2.4. Okay? So 1.8 ang answer, minus 1. So that would give us 80% increase in our ROI. In number, or problem number 13, sabi naman dito, ang hinahanap ay divisional investment. Okay? So, meron tayo return on sales na 10%, income of 5,000, and investment turnover of 4 times. So, kapag ginamit natin yung formula na to, makukuha natin yung answer. So, let's check. Ang segment margin natin ay 5,000. Okay? Divided by investment na hinahanap po natin sa problem number 13. Ngayon, ito daw ay equal to Return on sales na 10% times the turnover of 4 times. Okay? So, from here, we can solve magkano ang uh, investment natin. So, that would be 5,000 divided by 0.10 divided by 4. So, the answer is, ang divisional investment is 12,500 pesos. Okay? So these are your answers in problem number 12 and problem number 13. Okay? Thank you for watching this video. Sana may natutunan tayo about the topic responsibility accounting. So if you have questions, comments, suggestions, or reactions, please don't hesitate to email me at ryancanonroque at yahoo.com. Okay? I will wait for your questions.
I will wait, I will wait for your emails. Thank you so much. Mag-ingat po tayo la lagi lahat at maraming salamat po ulit. Thank you.